G'day campers, welcome back to Tencent Adventures. And in today's episode, a little bit of a breakaway from the build series, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about some accessories that we've purchased for the van and the car. Uh, safety, as many of you will have probably worked out by now, is a big thing for me when we're traveling on the road. So I went and had a chat to the guys at iCheck, uh, spoke to Sam directly and have organized to pick up a set of their TPMS uh, or tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, this is the latest version of this kit. Uh, we're gonna do a bit of an unboxing today. And then unlike some, of the, unlike some of the other videos you will have seen, we're actually gonna go through and show you the installation process, how they level, uh, and also go through some of the other accessories that we've picked up as well. Now, I do have to, before we start, give a couple of things. This isn't in any way a sponsored video, so we're not giving away any kits. We don't have a discount code at this stage. Uh, Sam, however, did throw in a few extras for me uh, free of charge. So Sam, big thank you for that. Uh, but for those of you that are watching this, do not think that uh, this is in any way gonna influence my decision on uh, the review of this product. Uh, I will say that I've, I know of uh, iCheck TPMS, uh, I've seen a lot of other YouTubers' videos of this, and we purchased this based on our understanding of the quality and just how good and easy to use this system is. Uh, I think it was Cam Wild from Wild Touring's video that we last saw, and but he has also got this same kit, uh, and that really did finally sell us on this as the TPMS of choice. So why don't we start with a bit of an unboxing, show you what we've got. Uh, we'll start with the main kit, and then we'll move on to the uh, accessories that Sam threw in for us. So opening the box for the first time. First thing we see is the rubber dash, uh, dash mount dash seal, this is just basically to uh, make sure it doesn't slide around on the, on the dash. Handy little instruction manual, I will be reading that before we go to the next step. Foam cover and the kit. So we can see here we've bought an eight pot uh, or an eight sensor kit. Uh, main reason for that, I've got five tyres on the car and three on the van. We have our bag of uh, locking nuts, power cable, charging cable, or charging adapter, uh, if we need to charge this in the car if the solar is not enough to keep it moving. A pack of eight dust caps, so these basically go uh, onto the valve before we put the sensor on, and then they just shift up and cover up the sensor to ensure there's no chance of gas or water or uh, gas, no chance of dust or uh, water getting into the sensors. This is for the uh, battery disassembly. So this, um, this tool here enables us to get the battery out of the sensors. Uh, so you do need to replace the batteries in this, I think uh, once every two years or there, thereabouts. Uh, the system, I believe, does give a warning when it's getting low on battery. Uh, and so this little tool just gives us the, uh, the capability of changing those batteries reasonably, reasonably easily. Uh, I'm actually gonna demonstrate this on probably the spare wheel sensor for the caravan. Uh, it's probably the least likely uh, tire that I'm gonna use, knock on wood. Uh, but just in case I stuff it up, but I will uh, demonstrate how this works as well. Next in the kit, we have our actual sensor. So that's uh, just a standard LCD screen. Solar panel on the top, so you, it basically holds its own battery. This will last about seven days, I believe, without, uh, without needing a, an external charge. Uh, it also turns itself off when the vehicle is not in motion. So it'll charge the battery as long as there's sunlight, but if your vehicle's parked at night time or in a garage and not moving, it turns itself off so you're not gonna waste your battery. Uh, just great, uh, another great feature. Natural sensors themselves look like so, pretty straightforward. Uh, don't weigh very much. All right, so that's pretty much everything that's in this kit. I think the next thing I wanna do is uh, take you guys out to the car and I'm gonna start installing this to the vehicle. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. 
but I don't think I've seen any videos that actually show how quick and easy it is to install. Uh, what I'm not gonna do though, is I'm not gonna put the locking nuts on. I don't wanna put them on because I'm dropping pressures all the time. This car does do a lot of off-roading and so therefore I do drop my tires. I think there's a good chance that we're gonna end up doing some sand driving with the caravan in a week or so. Uh, depending on where we actually end up uh, as we enter into South Australia, where we can legally drive on the beaches uh, in Victoria, we can't do that. So, uh, but yeah, if we are gonna be driving on sand, I'm gonna need to let a lot of tire pressure out of those uh, out of those tires. So I don't wanna put locking nuts on. Included spanner in here. I don't wanna have to get that out every time I wanna let my tires down. Let's go set it up. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set the uh, receiver up. So I'm just going to take that out of the box, including the rubber pad. Okay, so the rubber pad's just uh, it's got a little bit of adhesive steel on it. It's not like a proper sticky surface, but it does have a sticky-ish non-slip. Uh, it shouldn't do any damage to your vehicle. So I'm just going to set that up after I get rid of some of the dog fur. On that reason we centered in front of me. I'm just gonna set that on my dash about there. Just take the kit out of its bag. And this basically just sits on top of that uh, pad that we've just popped in. Now, looking at where it's sitting, it's reasonably centered. Uh, display is reasonably uh, easy to see from here. I'm a little bit concerned about the about how level my dash is and whether that's going to bounce around too much, but thus far it seems okay. I might just pop it back a little bit. Not obscuring the air vents, so that looks that looks pretty good. Out of the box, doesn't seem to have any charge, so what we're going to do is leave this in the sun. It's a little overcast today, but hopefully, hopefully there's enough sun coming in that that'll uh, pick up a charge reasonably quickly. And while that's charging up, we'll go and install the sensors. Sun's just come out, so that sensor should start charging pretty well now. Uh, very important, make sure that you read the instructions on where the sensors actually go. Uh, my immediate thought was that number one would be the driver's side, it's not. Number one is in fact the front passenger side. So uh, I didn't install anything. I did actually read the manual first for a change. Anyway. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm grabbing one rubber cap and sensor number one. Hopefully that's coming out on camera okay. And we're gonna install that on the tire itself. So essentially what we're gonna do, take off our dust cap, pop that aside somewhere safe for future use if should I need it. Next thing you wanna do is take your dust cap and just pop that dust cap over the valve. Now at this point, if I was using the locking nuts, I'd put a locking nut uh, on and wind that down, ready to screw back up and tighten onto the sensor. Next thing you want to do is tighten that sensor right up. It's going to cover the, uh, in here you can see your, uh, your valve pin, and that valve pin is going to end up in that uh, hollow in the center here. So I'm thinking that with these sensors, the, these uh, dust caps, they're not compulsory, and I am thinking that I'm going to have some trouble getting them on with that, but we'll see how we go. Seem to be okay there. Let's pull that cap back up. Let's tighten that up. No, I seem to be okay. So sensor number one, there it is. I'm now going to go around and do the rest of the tyres. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, that's the spare done. Time for the caravans. Process for the uh, caravans exactly the same. Take off the uh, dust cover, the valve cap, pop on your rubber sleeve and pop in your sensor. Job's right, now go do the other side. Okay, most of the van is done, I still have to do the spare tyre. Now we've got an OCAM dirty gear bag on the back, plus we've also got the Solar City Marini Caravan wheel protector. Uh, so I'm going to have to get all this off before I start. Joy. 
Now there is a fair bit of weight in this bag. We're actually uh, cutting some spare firewood around just in case we can uh, find somewhere to use it. Now after having put the rear sensor on the uh, spare tire of the caravan, I've had to take it off again because I did promise you I was going to do one more thing and let's show you how to change the batteries in the sensors. So I've taken the sensor back off again. Uh, and the first thing you're going to find is this tool. I showed this earlier. Uh, looks a bit like a disc. It is actually two parts. The first thing you need to do is get these apart. Now, I'll be honest, I just struggled for, I don't know how long, trying to unscrew these two sensor parts or these two tool parts. Uh, you don't unscrew them. You actually have to just separate them. They're just pressed together. Uh, so if you rotate them so that the teeth are at opposing angles or in the gaps of each tooth and just basically just pull apart and eventually it comes open like so. So once you've got it apart you've got a top and a bottom tool. Uh, it should be fairly obvious which way to go but the shorter, uh, the shorter depth hole is for the underside of the sensor and the top part just pops on top like so. Then just push down and unscrew. And after a couple of turns, it will all come apart. Just keep going through. Do try to do this in a clean area if possible because you do not want to get um, dust or anything else into this uh, area. Once it's done, you can take that top cover off. So the actual sensor uh, plate with the number on it, that's, that comes off. And then the underneath you'll see the sensor itself with a battery on top. Uh, this is a standard CR1632 battery. Uh, all you need to do is pop that out uh, just by pushing on the side of it. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna actually touch it because I don't wanna short it out and flatten it. But basically you just pop that out, pop the new battery in and then reapply the seal. Now in here, there is also a rubber grommet. Uh, if that's looking worn or faded, there is uh, an additional eight grommets in the kit. So I check have really thought of everything with this one. They're including everything you need, including those rubber grommets. So I'm now just gonna put this back together. Just lightly screw it together. And then I'm gonna put it back into the uh, tool and just tighten that up. Just wanna make sure that that rubber grommet is under a bit of pressure so that it's not gonna get any, uh, yeah, it's as tight as it'll go. And that, that rubber grommet's not gonna end up being a point of failure where it could end up getting dust or dirt or grime in and, and causing a seal break. Uh, which you really don't want because that's gonna flatten your tire. All right, all the sensors are in. Time to see whether I can turn this uh, unit on. I was gonna check it and make sure I'm not missing a button somewhere or anything else. Doesn't appear to be. It is quite warm. Nothing's turning on at the moment. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a uh, standard USB-C charger in the car. Just turn the car on. Should be good, because I'll get some air conditioning because it's bloody warm in here. Okay, that has definitely started up the uh, battery charging. So, see my car. Switch over the caravan in a second. There it is. It's sensing two. It's not sensing the one on the spare wheel. So that tells me that uh, I'm definitely gonna need to install that uh, additional booster. Uh, our 16 foot six caravan, look, there's probably an extra, I'd say a foot and a half off the back of the van for that tire carrier. So that's gonna make it, it's just gonna make it that little bit harder for this sensor that's all the way up the front of the car to pick up what's at the back. So we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that. Now what's happening at the moment, uh, so this comes through, it's now just cycling through and getting the PSI on the left hand side van. It's got it's picked up the back left of the car. We're just gonna let this go for a little bit and see if it picks up the other sensors. Yeah, it's starting to pick up all those extra tires. And what this is doing as well is it's presetting that as my desired inflation level. So I now know what my, uh, what my inflation levels are and I can now go around and level them as I need to. Okay, now the other two things I wanted to talk about are the two additional bits of kit that 
Sam from iCheck through in for me. What he's thrown in is a signal booster kit. Depending on the length of your van and the distance of the spare tire to the main receiver, you may or may not need this. Uh, generally speaking, you won't, but uh, look, it should help. Uh, certainly, Sam said definitely recommend it as, a, as an additional bit of uh, security to make sure that all of your sensors are being detected. Uh, it shouldn't cause any errors. You may get uh, some warnings that you've uh, that a sensor is not being detected. Uh, that will just stop that from happening. Uh, so I'm going to do a separate video on the installation of this. Before I do it, I do need to make sure that I'm installing it correctly with our uh, electrical system and the battery management system, just to make sure that I don't stuff anything up. Because uh, we've got a very expensive battery system in this caravan and the last thing we need is some idiot like me installing this and messing it all up. But it is pretty straightforward. I'll open that up in a sec. Now the other piece of kit that was thrown in is a set of the tyre deflators. Really keen to try those out the next time we go out and drop our tyre pressures. Let's just rip this open and have a look inside. So these are really nice anodized metal, not too weighty. Pretty clear inscription on what needs to be set to where. Very difficult to focus on these. Uh, but simply put, you basically just twist these to the desired setting. Loops, loosen and tighten the top bolt just to adjust everything. Overall, the instructions look very similar to that of a torque wrench, uh, but I'm gonna just check on what setting goes where so I don't completely deflate my tires. I do have the uh, I do have the pump to put them back up again, but uh, I don't wanna go lower than I need to, and I wanna make sure I get these all exactly the same so that I can uh, deflate the car tires very quickly. And then I've got another, well then immediately go and do the caravan tires as well. Conveniently, you do get four in the kit. So for your standard uh, four wheel drive trip, just basically set them all to the same setting and just walk around your car and pop them on. Uh, they will deflate the tire to the desired pressures. And then that's it. They'll, um, you just take them off, put your, uh, put your iCheck sensors back on and the beauty of the new sensor kit is that once your tires are deflated, it will automatically set that as the new pressure. So if you're off-road and you lower your pressures, you don't have to go through your uh, control panel or your display panel and reset everything to your sensors. Uh, this will do it all for you. And as I mentioned before, the signal booster kit, let's just pop this open and so you can have a look at what this actually looks like. So it's a pretty simple piece of apparatus. It's just a, basically just a signal booster. Uh, and a couple of cables to connect to your main battery. Uh, that needs to go in the van, obviously not the vehicle itself. Uh, so, and as close to the front of the van as possible to get it as close to the main sensor as possible. Uh, we've also got a couple of other bits and pieces, bits and pieces in here. We've got a Velcro uh, adhesive. So we can basically set this sensor up so that it connects without having to screw it into any of the nice fittings inside the van. Uh, it also means we can move it around if we need to without leaving uh, ugly holes anywhere. Uh, so I probably will use the Velcro kit when I do set this up. Uh, inside the unit itself, we've also got a fuse. I'll just uh, pop the top of that and find out what fuse rating that is. So, so this, is, uh, this is a very small fuse and it's uh, very low grade, a very light grade as well. It's only a two, uh, two amp fuse, two amp, two what? I don't even know what the numbers mean. It says two. I say, I'm useless with this stuff anyway. So uh, the fuse says two. So if you need to uh, replace it, use one that has a two on it and not a two zero because that's the kind of thing I'd do. All right, locking that back up. Not gonna do anything further with this today. Uh, I want to check a little bit more on the battery system of the new van uh, before I blow something up. Well, that's it guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if you think you would like one of these kits, if this is something you'd use, particularly the new model with the auto-adjusting sen auto sensors. Uh, 
Sam has told me if we do get enough comments and enough uh, likes on the video and people are interested, he is open to providing a discount code for you. So let me know in the comments below if you want to pick one up and if you'd like a discount code. And if so, I'll reach out to you with a private message once I've spoken to Sam and we've got something set up. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.